State of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! November and December, since we're almost at that month already, 2022. Spoiler alert, Dark Worlds is not going to be part of that meta. <laughs> so many people hate me for that video. It's just my opinion, man. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1k ladder. Currently sitting at 1019 subscribers. And let me tell y'all, I am hard, and we can all be hard together as long as you hit that subscribe button, like button, ding dong, notification, taco bell, and all that good stuff. Taco Bell is one of my favorite fast food places, probably the favorite fast food place for my belly and my holes, besides the point. Let's talk about the Yu-Gi-Oh! 2022 metagame. So, we're a tier zero metagame, <laughs> in case you didn't know. <laughs> Dark worlds are still garbage. <laughs> so many people were pissed about that. Like, good lord, I went into my uh, held for review comment section just to see what kind of spice I find in there from time to time. People calling me slurs for uh, mentally challenged people and like, homophobic slurs and like the, everything under the sun because I said that dark worlds are garbage. Like, here's the thing in the current metagame. Number one, it is not new user friendly. If you are a little Timmy and Johnny or you're just brand new to Yu-Gi-Oh, like you're going to your first couple locals, <laughs> don't, don't play tier. If you somehow watch this video or you somehow find it, don't play tier. You're not going to know what you're doing. Tier element requires a very skillful player that knows the ins and outs of the deck to get rewarded. And if you're not playing, I would argue either tier element, sprite, some variation of runic, or just some deck, whether it's Naturia or something that plays the Earth Fairy support. If you're not doing any of that, you're having a very, very hard time. And that was my main argument behind why Dark Worlds are just booty booty butt cheeks, beside the fact that the deck is just probably gonna be booty booty butt cheeks in general. But you know what? Community proved me wrong. I'm gonna let y'all go off into your corner. Y'all go into your little dark world lab and shit <laughs> and cook up some spice. And until then, you know, I'll I'll be over here making my videos. <laughs> so I might be wrong. Who knows? The way I see it, you only got a few decks to pick. If you don't want to play tier, you need to design your deck to beat tier. So you could do like the OCG did where they said, screw this, I'm playing Exosister. So they went and played Exosister. Or if you want to be that guy in the room that says, fuck all y'all, you can say, I'm going to play Runic. Now, Runic, it's really interesting how the deck functions because there's several different ways that you can build it, either with or without the Ishizu support. Most people are going with the Ishizu support now just because it's so much better than the Reasoning and Monster Gate engine. You know, we only have Reasoning and Monster Gate to one. And in a 40-card deck, you know, 38 cards are either Cyber Valley, which is three copies of that, or Runic spells it's hard to get to that reasoning and monster gate consistently. Now, with the Ishizu stuff, it gives you extenders, it gives you an ability to make a Dweller, a Baguska, whatever it is that you need to make at that point in time in the game. It gives you access to do Garrus just to deck thin more through your uh, runic spells. It, it's very malleable in that sense. And that's one really cool thing about the Ishizu stuff is that it makes, excuse me, makes a lot of decks... Um, very malleable and gives them a rank four toolbox package. Uh, but yet the issue along with that is, is that, you know, it, that may be good for rogue decks. That puts them from like, like they start right here, it puts them to here, but then it puts all the top tier meta decks all the way up to the upper echelon, past the camera, into the universe, into, you know, universe 11 and Dragon Ball world. <laughs> and so what we're seeing still is a lot of innovation. Some people say that the tier element mirror match takes skill. I don't know why the fuck they're saying that, because it doesn't. <laughs> it's just an RNG nightmare of trigger effects, like real talk. Uh, if you're going into a tier element mirror, or you're just assuming that you're going to play a mirror, like if you're going to a YCS, you got to be able to say, hey, how consistently can I make an Abyss Dweller going first before I commit to my mills? And if you're able to consistently do that, you're going to have a good time. You know, it's... It's really interesting to see that happen in the metagame and also especially to see the innovation that's taking place in the meantime, whether it's someone playing Runic, Exosister, <laughs> Crystal Beast, which I'm never touching that shit again for good reason. <laughs> um, yeah, go, go watch the profile. And so at the same time, 
what we're seeing, like I feel with locals and things is that people are either not playing tier or if they are, it's kind of a waste of money if you're playing tier at locals, to be honest. You know, we're seeing things like Sprite, maybe even some Naturi at some higher level events. Like we are seeing different things in the meta. At least that's what I'm seeing in my locals. I don't know about you. But I think that it's it still provides for somewhat of a fun format because you can have that diversity at a local level. But man, if you go to these big events, whether it's YCSs, regionals, what have you, you got to prepare as if you're going against tier element because it's just the deck to beat. And you know, I was thinking about this the other day and I was talking with our homie Valley D about it while we were testing the other day. And he made the good point that, yeah, we're in a tier zero format, but thank God that we're not in a tier zero format like Spiral. And I didn't really play a whole competitively a lot during that time because I had just started a full-time job. I didn't really have a whole lot of time to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And so he reminded me how Spiral could you know, make an unkillable, I think it was like Master Plan. And then they had like the 3000 attack boss monster and they could U-Link you. So not only, and this is during Master Rule 4 before they changed it to where extra deck monsters besides Link monsters could be played in the main monster zone. So if you made like a starter strike and had to go in the extra monster zone. So not only do they lock you out of your extra deck, but then they just make an unkillable boss monster. And it's just like, well, I'm gonna go uh, play with myself in the corner now because you know that's more entertaining than this baby back bullshit. <laughs> so at least we're not in a toxicity like that. You know the reason why we're in a tier zero format right now with the cheesy tier element. What's really pushing them over the edge at that point, or what we're seeing right now rather, is the fact that just the Ashizu cards provide for so much more pluses than really anything else can keep up with. Like yeah, if you're playing something like Runic, and Let's say the Ishizu player hits you for a mill five off the Aigido and you hit your Aigido and kill back, then yeah, you're going to mill them more cards, but that's still giving the tier player pluses at the end of the day. Not to mention that both players have access to Keldeo and Medora, so they can just start screwing with each other's targets either for Fountain or for tier element plays. And it just comes down to a war of attrition at that point. And at the end of the day, the tier element player is going to have more resources in the tank than, say, a runic player. You know, if the runic player needs to hit three runic spells in their grave or they're screwed, then you just go chain Keldeo, put three back, eat my ass. Like, that's literally what's going to happen. Then, moving on to the rogue, I mean... God, I don't know why people are so stuck on Dark World. Like, I'm not I'm not saying that just because, like, the video's got over a thousand views, which is nice. But it's just Rogue in general. Like, you have to ask yourself in this format, how do you beat Tier? Because if you're able to beat Tier, you're able to beat everything else. Like, everything else is irrelevant. Like, if you're consistently beating Tier, you can consistently beat Sprite. Sprite is the only deck in the format right now that plays 12 to 15 hand traps. Pretty much nothing else is playing hand traps, which is why I don't really feel like Cash Tier is going to be all that great, depending on what gets hit on a ban list, because it loses to Nibiru. It will probably lose to hand trap sprite majority of the time, like 9 out of 10 games. And, you know, then when you look at something like Rogue, which could be anything, I mean, you could even argue that the current builds of Cash Tier are Rogue. You know, they just play to go second and go from there, you know, maybe lock out a couple monster zones, but it's like, what are you doing? You know, the best deck that you could really play right now to try and beat the meta is Flunder. And even then, you got to ask yourself, well, how lucky am I going to get with my die rolls? And how consistently are we going to be opening up D-Shifter? Because if you're not doing those things, you're having a really tough time. And so Rogue has definitely suffered a lot, I feel. I'm still sticking to my guns that I don't feel like a deck like Dark World can keep up. Because even if it's not Rogue, like I said before, you have to ask yourself, how are you beating tier? How are you consistently beating that deck? You know, if, you know, God, if you're a Grand Maju player, you got to figure out, okay, I want to go second. Do, is my game plan against tier enough to beat them going second? Or are they going to just mill me out? And uh, it's it's a shame to see rogue decks that were viable pre Ishizu to fall to the wayside. At the same time, it's nice to know that you know, once Ashizu kind of gets taken out back and shot in the head, that hopefully those decks will be able to come back into the fray, you know, depending on how a balance shapes up in general. Some people think we're going to get emergency balanced. I don't think it's going to happen. I just, we're about a, maybe a month or two away from a list, and I don't really see them doing anything like that. Plus, at the end of December, too, we have the remote dual YCS, which is just going to be a bucket of garbage because it's remote dual. Remote duels suck. I've talked ad nauseum about how they suck and how people just use proxies and stuff. 
on like a 240p camera that not even Pornhub would let them use, but I digress. You know, I think early January, early February, we'll get some kind of list because, you know, keep in mind Photon Hypernova comes out at like mid-February, beginning of February. They're not going to want to wait too long before we get the new cash tier of support to drop a ban list. So, guys, these are just my thoughts on the current format and things that are shaping up. Did did I leave something out that I'm just not talking about? I tried to kind of condense everything to like a 10-minute video. Plus, two, I haven't been on my cancer meds in four days, and I feel just fucking annihilated because I'm all over the place. I need my meds if my insurance company would just do their job. So, guys, please, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.